let's start with the summary of the story with a few highlighted events. So the first thing, the narrator developed an aversion to water at a young age. So the narrator, you know, was very much keen on learning how to swim. But, you know, he had many experiences from a very young age which had actually made him dislike water. That means he had an aversion towards water, he disliked it. So the first memory was when he was just three or four years old and he had gone to some beach along with his father. And suddenly, you know, he was completely washed off by a wave and he felt as if he was buried under the water. So that was the starting point of his fear. And thereafter, you know, he would always remember the same thing. But he still wanted to learn swimming and therefore he went, he, you know, he gathered all his courage, he became, he had a strong will and he decided that, okay, now I'm going to learn swimming. And he chose the YMCA pool, which he felt was a very safe place to learn how to swim. So the narrator recalls a horrific incident that happened to him when he was 10 or 11 years old. He had decided to learn swimming and the YMCA pool gave him the opportunity as it was safe. It was only two or three feet deep and then uh, there was a greater depth at the later stage uh, where you know the shift was very gradual and then it was nine feet deep at the other end. But this drop was very gradual. In comparison, the Yakima River was very treacherous, means it was very, very dangerous. The narrator's mother continually warned him against it. She kept reminding him about the details of each drowning incident in the river. The narrator developed an aversion, that is a dislike, towards the water at the age of three or four years when his father took him to the beach in California. The waves knocked him down and swept over him. He was buried in water and was breathless. He was terrorized by the strong force of the waves, but his father had only laughed. Now, you know, even uh, you know, after having that memory, he still decided to come to the YMCA pool. But again, something happened in the YMCA pool because he, he came all prepared with those water wings and he decided that, okay, he's going to swim. In fact, when two, two, three days actually went by, so he had started getting comfortable with that. But then one misadventure, one horrific incident happened again. The misadventure. The introduction to the pool revived the narrator's unpleasant memories and stirred his childhood fears. Still, he tried to learn swimming by imitating, that is by copying the other boys. He was just beginning to feel at ease, that is he started becoming a little comfortable in the water when a mishap, that is an accident, occurred. He went to the pool one day and found that no one was there, no one else was there. And just when he was looking at the pool, suddenly, a, you know, a stronger boy, a very big boy of almost 18 years old, came by and actually threw him in the pool. So he sat on one side of the pool to wait for the others. Just then, a big bully came. He was quite muscular. He picked up Douglas, that is the author, and threw him into the deep end of the pool. Douglas landed in a sitting position swallowed water and went at once to the bottom. Now the struggle, the fight starts. When the author was thrown at the deeper end of the pool by this man, by, by this boy, so author obviously he was just learning how to swim. It was just two or three days he started coming. So at that point when he was going inside the water, so he just started thinking that how is he going to save himself? What next he should be doing? So he made a plan that, okay, once I will reach the floor, I, my foot, my feet is going to, uh, you know, hit the floor, the tile of the pool. I am going to take a big jump and come up to the surface, then lie on my back and swim to the uh, other edge. That is the edge that is shallower and save myself. But let's see what happened. Douglas tried to save his life. The narrator was frightened, but not frightened out of his mind. He made a plan to save himself. When his feet would hit the bottom, he would make a big jump, come to the surface, lie flat on it and paddle, that is 
swim to the edge of the pool. However, the nine feet down seemed more like 90 to the poor Douglas. So while you know he made this plan and the moment his feet touched the tile, he actually thought that he's taken a very nice jump. But then eventually when he opened his eyes to see where he was and you know he just saw that there was water all around. He could not see anything and in fact he noticed that the water had a slight yellow color to it and that water seemed very dirty to him. So you know fear started engulfing him, he was getting very panicked, he started throwing his hand uh, you know in order to get hold of some rope or something but there was nothing but just water all around. So he was totally out of breath when his feet touched the bottom. Still, with all his strength, he made a spring, that is he made a jump, he took a jump upwards. He came up slower than he had thought. In that, than he had thought. He opened his eyes and saw nothing but water. And that is when he started to panic. Douglas was suffocating and tried to yell but no sound came out. But slowly what happened, after some time he realized that his eyes were out of water, his nose was out of water and his mouth was out of water. And that is when he again, you know, he took a huge breath so as to, you know, actually uh, have some breath. You know, because he was panting all the way, he was, uh, you know, fear, uh, he was uh, very fearful at that time. But the moment he took breath again, you know, he, he started going inside the pool again. He started getting drowned again. And again, this time also when he was going down, he had the same plan in mind that, okay, this time also I'm going to do the same thing. So a sheer stark terror. Then he came up to the surface and started beating the surface of the water. He tried to breathe, but swallowed water and choked. He tried to bring his legs up, but they hung like dead weights. A great force was taking him to the bottom of the pool. That is the second time he was going down. That is, he was drowning in the pool again. He had lost all his breath. You know, his hands, his legs felt as if it is paralyzed, they're unable to move. His, leg, his lungs were aching. His only thing that, you know, made him realize that yes, he's okay, he's still alive was the, you know, the pounding in his head, the beating of his heart. So his lungs ached and his head throbbed, but he remembered his strategy. He opened his eyes and saw nothing but water with a yellow glow. A sheer stark terror seized him that knew no understanding. The terror that knew no control. A terror that only the one who had experienced it could understand. He was shrieking underwater, but only his pounding heart and the pounding in his head said that yes, he was still alive. Douglas told himself that he had to remember to jump the moment he reaches or hits the bottom of the pool. And that's what he did. He again jumped with all his might, but his jump went in vain. He was still under the water. The stark terror took him more tightly in his clutches. So now he was getting more panic, more terror had engulfed him. He was feeling as if he, you know, he's going to die. Now, this time when the author actually came up to the surface for the second time, only his eyes and part of the nose was above the water. And then he could see the lights outside the pool. But the moment he could realize something, again, this is for the third time he started getting drowned. And but this time, you know, he was completely feeling as if he's lifeless. There was no uh, strength within him and he just kind of resigned at this point. His, you know, he started feeling dizzy, started feeling as if he's going to faint. His, so at this point, you know, he kind of accepted that, yes, now his life is no longer going to be and he's going to die. And at the moment he accepted that, yes, now he's dying. So all that fear, all the pain that he had been feeling in the past two struggle just went away. In fact, he felt more relaxed. He felt as if he's going to have a very good sleep. Yes, this is what happened because he had accepted that yes, now he is about to die. His life is, come out to, his, his life is coming to an end. The fight for survival is lost. Douglas describes how fear paralyzed him. His arms and legs stopped moving. 
he trembled with fright he tried to call for his mother but nothing happened suddenly douglas found himself coming out of the water he sucked for the air and even got water but then he started going down for the third time and then all his efforts ceased and his body went limp a blackness took over his brain which wiped out that fear and terror because now he started feeling dizzy and that fear gave uh, you know went away and he felt as if now there is no pain nothing he was not fighting any more for his survival everything went quiet and peaceful douglas felt as if he was wrapped in his mother's arms then he fell unconscious and the next thing that he remember was that he was outside the pool and he was vomiting by its side so the next thing he remembers was lying on his stomach beside the pool vomiting now the terror destroyed douglas social life he tried to overcome it so now this incident actually gripped fear uh, in douglas mind and douglas heart and you know for a very long period of time he could not enjoy many of his activities that others were doing like going out for boating fishing enjoying the waterfall swimming nothing you know the terror the fear was just come rushing back to him so douglas couldn't eat that night he was weak and trembling he shook and cried on his bed he never went back to the pool he feared water and avoided it whenever he could whenever he went to the water or whenever he went near the water the terror that had seized him in the pool would return to him to haunt him the fear actually paralyzed him this handicap stayed with him as years rolled by it ruined his fishing trips deprived him of the joy of canoeing boating and swimming he tried his best to overcome all this but it didn't let go of him finally one day douglas thought of a plan and that was he actually called upon an instructor so as to learn to swim so finally douglas decided to get a swimming instructor he went to a pool practiced for weeks months and eventually mastered up the skill of swimming this rope so firstly he was learning the first step where he had a belt around him and he was in the pool along with the instructor he was uh, holding a rope and then he used to move from one edge to the other edge that is from the entire length of the pool now after mastering that skill his instructor taught him about the art of breathing when he was inside the water and then later on came the art of using the legs in the water and eventually you know it took him some 3 to 4 months or 5 months to be a good swimmer so he actually said that you know his instructor had actually built a swimmer piece by piece so this rope went through a pulley the instructor held on to the other end of the rope each time the instructor relaxed his hold on the rope and douglas went under some of the old terror returned and froze his legs it took him 3 months to get over this fear then the instructor taught him how to breathe so this is the second exercise and first is when he was holding that rope and he was going through that next he taught him the art of breathing while swimming next he taught taught him to move his legs thus piece by piece step by step bit by bit he built a swimmer out of douglas now one day uh, you know the swim uh, the instructor actually told douglas that now you are ready to swim now you can jump into the pool and swim so douglas did that and finally the role of the instructor came to an end he had done his job well he taught him to swim very nicely but douglas felt as if his uh, role is still not fulfilled he has definitely learned how to swim and he's been practicing over so many months but he felt as if you know whenever he was practicing whenever he learned swimming the instructor was always nearby so he felt as if you know what if he's alone in the pool and that fear again comes back again haunts him so he wanted to be confident enough he wanted to see if the fear is still there or not so he completely wanted to overcome that 
and therefore he went from different places he went to different uh, you know near the mountain peaks different islands lakes uh, from one place to another and he did a lot of swimming all alone till the time you know whatever doubt he had that yes he is having some sort of fear in his mind was actually you know uh, he actually cleared all that doubt and he became so confident that yes i can now you know say that i do not have any fear that fear will never haunt me those bad memories and in fact i am very confident to do uh, to swim to be near the water as and when i want so douglas will to live grew in intensity after the training was finished douglas wondered if he would be terrorized or terror stricken when he would be alone in the pool he tried and tiny vestiges of the old terror did return but now he was not afraid douglas was still not satisfied so he went to lake wentworth in new hampshire and swam into and he and swam 2 miles across the lake and when douglas was in the middle of the lake he put his face under the water he deliberately did that to see you know whether he would be terrorized again or not and he saw nothing but the bottomless water so at this point the fear did return so at this point the fear did return but then you know he was able to overcome it so the old sensation came back to haunt him but this time douglas was strong he was more confident he swam on yet he had some residual doubts and for that he went to the warm lake he swam to the other end and came back he was thrilled with joy as he had conquered his fear of water the experience had a deep meaning for him and he's saying that you know overcoming this fear that has actually haunted him from so many years since childhood he says that that is a feeling that only a person who has been through a similar experience can only be able to understand and will only be able to acknowledge and appreciate so he explains that death was peaceful but it was the fear of the death that crippled a person here he quotes president roosevelt saying all we have to fear is the fear itself because he had experienced death and the terror that it could produce and his will to live somehow grew in intensity and with this we have completed the summary of this story and you know this story actually may be close to many may be close to many people they might have experienced some similar uh, things in life because you know everyone is fearful of some or the other thing and it is a journey that how one overcomes their fear do we just accept that and and live with that or we do something to overcome that so this journey actually brings back memories not just for me but i'm sure for each one of you who are viewing this video who is reading the story that yes there is a part of fear about something that everyone has but have we overcome it yes